and welcome to another What's Going On PSA. I'm Lisa, one of the educators here in the park, and today I'm with my very good friend, Nick DeRico, who's our natural resource steward, and we're here at Cascade Falls. And we're here to talk about uh, one of the major concerns that we have here in the park, and it's an invasive species that is affecting our hemlock trees. The eastern hemlock is considered a keystone species and plays an important role in maintaining the unique and diverse habitats found in these areas and serves as an important cultural resource to the community. It is a coniferous evergreen tree native to eastern United States and Canada. They are located everywhere within the park. It is mostly easy identified by two small stominal lines found on the underside of its needles and has a small oval shaped cone that's singular in attachment. So let's look at one closely. So on the underside, you can see the line underneath each of the needles. So Nick, can you tell us a little bit about this invasive species and what they're called? Yeah, thanks Lisa. So uh, as Lisa said, we're dealing with a new uh, invasive species here in the park called the hemlock woolly adelgid. It's an aphid-like insect that uh, feeds on certain species of hemlocks uh, and spruces. In this case, we're worried about the eastern hemlock. Um, as you can see, uh, the little small white uh, dots are actually the adelgid themselves. Uh, they can be found on the underside uh, of the hemlock needles. Now, when did these first show up here in the park? Here in the park, we found them in November of 2020. Um, but we are one of the later counties to uh, discover the adelgid in Ohio. Now, who actually discovered them here in the park? Uh, here in the park, it was actually an employee of the Nature Conservancy. Um, they were actually here on, a, on their personal time hiking and, and, and noticed it on the Slippery Rock Trail uh, and then reported it That's shortly after. My next question, where were they first actually discovered? Yeah, first actually found along the Slippery Rock Trail. Um, winter of 2020 into, into early 21, uh, we did a very extensive survey effort. Um, we found populations in Slippery Rock, uh, Artist Trail, Northern Cohasset areas. Um, and then now we're also into the Cascade Run area, Birch Hill Cabin, uh, and also Bears Den Cabin as well. Now, when are they most noticeable? What type, like the season? Yeah, uh, they're most noticeable uh, through the winter into early spring. Um, I would say March is probably the most noticeable point. Um, they actually swell up a bit and become Come very noticeable. Okay, has the park partnered with anyone to help identify and control this invasive species? Yeah, so we've been working with the Nature Conservancy. Um, they, they've helped us out with some surveying efforts and also treatments, um, starting with the Slippery Rock Artist Trail area, uh, hoping to expand this year. Did we receive a grant to help with this process? So the Nature Conservancy has a grant uh, through the Forest Service. Uh, to treat uh, hemlocks, survey and treat hemlocks in the uh, Lake Erie watershed. Um, the Forest Service was uh, gracious enough to allow them to extend outside of the watershed to help us out last year in, uh, in 21 and, and also in the late uh, 2020. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, what exactly is our management plan to help with this? Yeah, so right now we are still uh, in the relatively early stages. We've done some insecticide treatments to actually kill the adelgid on the infected trees. Um, so just how that works from, from funding standpoint uh, and also from a, an application standpoint, it's gonna be a phased approach, starting with certain size classes of trees, um, treating them, seeing the results, and then moving down through the different size classes. So what are the size classes? Because not every tree will be treated, correct? Correct, okay. yeah. Uh, so starting large, um, last year we started treatments on trees uh, 28 inches uh, dbh or larger and then also um, the size class 26 to 28 inches. Okay. Now is this treatment a once and done or is this a treatment that will, will be continuing to manage throughout the years? A little bit of both. 
Okay. Um, so the initial treatment lasts up, up to seven years. Um, in the case of uh, chemicals called imidacloprid that we're using, in this case there are a few other options out there, but, but right now we're using imidacloprid and that lasts up to seven years. Now how do you administer that type of treatment? A couple different delivery methods. Okay. Um, you have trunk injections. Uh, we're using those on uh, that largest size class, the 28 inches and above, or anything within 10 feet of water. Um, that's per the label, you have, to, you have to do trunk injections near water. Okay, so what are the other treatments? Um, so we have uh, basal bark sprays, where you would spray the, the chemical on the, uh, the bottom four and a half feet or so of the trunk. It gets absorbed by the tree. Uh, or also uh, what they call it soil drenches, where you scrape back the leaf matter and just pour the chemical directly onto the root base, and then the tree uptakes the chemical. Now when you, well, not you, but when this application is done, are they only able to do so much acreage at a time? Yeah, there are um, limits as to how much active ingredient of the chemical that you can apply per acre, per year. Okay. So that's why only certain size classes are getting treated. Um, basically treat until you hit those acreage limits and you have to stop the day. How can we tell okay. which trees have been treated? So the treated trees will have a um, painted circle at the base and greenish Bluish greenish uh, yeah, color. Yeah, bluish greenish color. Yeah. Uh, so if you see those in the park, that's what it means that that was a treated tree in, in uh, 2021. Yeah. Which areas have we already treated? Uh, Slippery Rock Trail area, Northern uh, Cohasset, uh, and also Artist Trail was the main focus last year. Okay. Um, up towards the loop on a little bit. Person notices oh. these white woolly bugs on their own hemlocks at home. What should they do? Yeah, so if you're a homeowner outside of the park, uh, your best bet would be to call uh, either the, the Ohio Department of Agriculture or uh, Division of Forestry. It'd be your agencies on a state level handling the indulgent. Okay. Can you purchase uh, pesticides and stuff like that to treat your own trees? You can, yeah. Uh, or, or contacting you know someone like a Davy Tree. They could do treatments for you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's good to know. If we did not treat our hemlocks here in the park, what would have actually happen? Yeah, so without intervention, the adelgid is fatal eventually. Um, luckily, it comes with a little bit of time. Usually between four to eight years uh, is the timeline where you start to see decline and eventual death of the tree. Um, other parts of the U.S. have been dealing with it for a long time, decades really. Um, if you Google uh, you know, Smoky Mountain, uh, you know, hemlock, uh, woolly adelgid, yeah. shows some really awful pictures of just the whole landscape is, is, is altered. It, yeah, completely changed the forest, killed everything. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're early on in the stages here. Um, you know, everyone that's, that's, that's looked at this from, uh, you know, Division of Forestry and others that, that think that we're early on in the infestation. So uh, good timing in that sense, and we hope to get ahead of it. Okay. So that's another What's Going On PSA. I'm Lisa with... Nick. With Nick. <laughs> and thanks for joining us. Um, we hope to control this invasive species so it, it doesn't take away all of our beautiful trees that we have here in the park. So hope to see you sometime soon here in the park. So thanks.